episodes and you can see all the recordings that we have in other categories. Um, what this program is, it's a weekly series that you can tune into and learn some new stuff, find out information on a variety of topics and uh, ask DNR staff and our guest questions. It's every Wednesday, it's around 12 o'clock and we take about 45 minutes of programming and question and answer. And our goal is for you to learn something new about hunting, fishing or outdoor recreation um, opportunities that you have across Minnesota. Share how the DNR manages our state wildlife and wildlands and give tips on how you can improve your skills to be stewards uh, of our shared natural resources. Our upcoming schedule today is the understanding rifle cartridges. Next week will be steelhead fishing, fishing for rough fish, uh, the suckers, the uh, carp families that we have here in Minnesota. And then uh, you can see the other ones watching uh, and hunting for sharp tailed grouse, learning about the Becoming Outdoor Woman program. And then I've got two back to back on 4-H shooting sports and wildlife and 4-H outdoor adventures. So that'll be the upcoming schedule. And today's talk is understanding rifle cartridges and selections for Minnesota game, white-tailed deer, black bear, elk. And the moose is an asterisk because our population of moose has declined a bit and our scientists are working on reasons why they're declining, but maybe one day we'll get the population back to where we can still do some moose hunting. I was lucky enough in 1990 to, to do a moose hunt and we took a animal out of the Boundary Waters canoe area. So let's throw this out right away, a non-toxic stewardship message when um, hunting in Minnesota, the use of non-toxic shocks reg regulated for species and hunt locations across Minnesota by state or federal law uh, for state park hunts and um, the hunting of waterfowl, that's non-toxic stuff. Lead ammunition, used at designated shooting ranges, monitored and can be reclaimed and recycled. I've been involved in a couple of those projects and uh, that's kind of rewarding work to know that we're getting it recycled and reused. Um, in our program, we use non-toxic ammunition in the field for our learn to hunt programs to protect eagles, hawks and other scavengers that clean up the non-consumable parts left in the field by hunters, reduce lead in uh, process big game, so we, we've had some studies that we've done and uh, lead tends to, to migrate around a critter. So by using non-toxic, you don't have to worry about that being uh, an exposure to that being in your wild game. So here in Minnesota, uh, 0 0.220 or larger. Um, I always thought that was strange because I've never seen a 0 0.220, but uh, that's our legal minimum size. It's gotta be loaded with a single projectile and it has to be a soft point or expanding uh, type bullet. Hunters are reminded to select the bullet suitable for taking big game. Uh, most major manufacturers offer their either a bonded or a cal copper uh, bullet that are appropriate for taking big game. Hunters are advised to select a proper bullet designed and weight suitable for humanely taking big game. That comes right out of our, our reg book. So here's gonna start our program. How do cartridges get their names? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. you, you look at some of the names and um, it's like, how did they come up with that? So Phil and I were talking yesterday and, and it's it's not the inch system that we use. What was the term you used yesterday, Phil? Well, it's it's a most often a decimal portion of an inch. You know, in the traditional imperial fashion, you would break it down to feet and inches, and then it would be a fraction of an inch. You know, a two and three quarter, if you will. But you know, somewhere along the line, to be precise, we went to decimal portions of an inch just to further confuse things. Right. right. So a point three oh eight is a thirty caliber bullet. It's also the the name of one of our 30 calibers, a 308 Winchester. Um, the metric family that came from Europe, um, you know, they measure the diameter of the bullet in millimeters and the length of the case. So a seven by 57 gives us a lot of information about that particular cartridge. It's seven millimeters around, 57 millimeters tall. And uh, that, that tends to be a, a pretty good um, way to describe things. Mm -hmm. If we, we go back, um, you know, 
hundred years or better, um, maybe a little bit longer. They they listed the diameter of the bullet and the grains of black powder. So a forty-five seventy was a forty-five caliber bullet with seventy grains of black powder. Right, forty-four forty, thirty-two forty. Yep, and uh, sometimes they'll even add the bullet weight in there. So a forty-five seventy four oh five, we knew exactly what the recipe was. So if we're out there on the plains hunting buffalo, we could we could recreate that round if we had the supplies to do it. Right. So manufacturers and i know you know a lot of them phil mm-hmm. um you know winchester remington uh they have their own cartridges that they brought out to market so like a 270 winchester winchester brought that 27 caliber bullet out and um Correct. they named it after their company you know they, they were going to take all the uh, advantages that they could get by putting their name on that uh 280 remington um tells us that remington the manufacturer developed that cartridge um 30-06 which is used by a lot of people out there in the hunting field that one was named for the caliber and the year that it was manufactured Mm -hmm. or invented and then the manufacturer was springfield so it's 30 caliber of 1906 and springfield was the the folks that brought that cartridge forward and i think craig the reason they they tacked the springfield on there was not only because it was developed at the springfield armory but because the 3040 craig which was our previous uh it was the predecessor yep. uh, in the army was known as the 30 u.s army yep so i think they were trying to make a, a designation to, to to let you know look this is a different cartridge i agree and uh you know we talked yesterday about cartridges that were named after the inventor. So uh, um, 257 Roberts, uh, Mm -hmm. a fellow by the name of Ned Roberts developed that cartridge. Uh, The 7x57 Mauser, that was developed by Paul Mauser. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Phil mentioned this one yesterday, the 764 Brennecke. It's a great caliber. It's on par with our 280, but old Wilhelm Brennecke was the uh, inventor of that. So it gets to carry his name Boy, how old do you think that 764 is? Oh, I, I, it's over a century. Right, right. So his his name is still attached to that. Sure. And then, the like I said, the Europeans they like to uh, tell us the diameter. So a 5.56 by 47. Mm-hmm. We know that as a 223, but in Europe they would they would call it by the designation a 7 by 57 or a 762 by 51, and we know mm-hmm. that one as a 308. And I mean, you'll see in in some European cartridge boxes, they'll take a, our our common thirty thirty, which is the American way of naming thirty caliber, thirty grains of black powder, and they'll convert that to a metric designation. So it'll be the seven six two by I don't know what it is forty seven R, right? And the R in those metric cartridges stands for rim. So right, if you see seven by fifty seven R, it's a rimmed seven millimeter Mauser. And they're out there. Um, sure, you know you're. Uh... Over under rifle, uh, side by side rifle might be a rimmed uh, cartridge. And um, I remember a guy at a gun show came in with two boxes of 7 by 57 r that he'd bought. And it's like, they don't fit in my gun. I said, well, they're probably not going either. <laughs> you know? But uh, so let's talk a little bit about rim fires. That's kind of where everybody cuts their, their teeth. Mm-hmm. And um, we've got some numbers up there on the screen. Why don't you tell us a little bit about rimfire cartridges that you like well first of all as it says on the screen they're not legal for big game right um you know but they do make a good choice i personally think every hunter should have a rimfire in their collection uh garden pests small games such as rabbits and squirrels or even up to foxes and coyotes uh stuff like that it's a very handy little cartridge um you know going back to the to the 4570 era the early 1870s they had the 22 short the 22 long they had the 22 extra long, and lastly came the 22 long rifle, which to this day, I think it came out in 1879, remains probably the best rim fire choice going. You know, it's just completely usable, easy recoil, very low report, great tool for training younger shooters, new shooters. Um, and unbeknownst to most people, if you have a 22 long rifle, you might have to single feed it, but it will shoot 22 longs and 22 shorts as well. Right. In a pinch. Um, Perfectly safe work. to do so. 
And I can't tell you how many thousands of rounds of 22 long rifle I've I've shot over the years. Um, oh, it's fantastic! I mean, to this day, it's the most shot gun on in my collection. You know, right. I, I have the same. My, it was a Christmas present from my dad back in 1985. Uh, it's a Ruger 77 22. It's been on magazine covers, but it's it's my training tool personally and for other shooters. And I wouldn't trade that one for the world. You know what? We got going so quickly, buddy. I forgot to tell folks who you are. Oh, everybody knows who I am. Phil Massaro. <laughs> um, Phil and I've known each other going on 10 years. Um, we actually met through Facebook. Now, I know that sounds a little bit odd, but uh, I was looking for information on, on shooting and found Phil. And a few years later, we got to meet up for the first time out at SHOT Show and uh, spend some some time with our, our wives with us. And uh, that was a great meeting. And Phil's an avid writer. And uh, one of one of his columns that he I see on um, the internet there quite a bit is the head to head, and mm -hmm. we'll take two cartridges and compare those and and break them down as to you know what they're used for, how they work, and then he'll declare a winner of the two. And that's that's still probably one of my favorite. Even if he doesn't pick my favorite cartridge each time, it's it's a pretty good way to um, you know learn about ammunition so if you get a chance you can uh you can check some of those out so bill massaro you want to tell you tell the folks a little bit about yourself we're a little late but go ahead no it's okay um you know we we started my wife and i we started a, a custom ammunition company called massaro ballistic laboratories uh pretty much out of necessity and what we do uh not so much anymore with the component crunch but what we do when things are rolling good is we create custom ammunition either obscure stuff or uh, a load that a guy can't buy. Like you say, if you got a seven by 57 R, he can't get ammunition. I'll procure the brass set of dies and work up a load with the customer. And out of that, I ended up, you know, gun digest said to me, look, would you write us a book? And I, I mean, I thought it was a joke, you know, I thought somebody was pulling my leg, but it was for real. And I, uh, one book led to articles and now we're six, seven books deep, uh, thousands of articles and, I am, I am the seventh in the history of the book. I'm the seventh editor in chief of the gun digest annual. So pretty proud of that. That is really cool. Um, and, and it was your passion for, for shooting. Um, uh, Phil's dad is also Phil. And I made mm -hmm. the mistake one day of calling the wrong Phil in the phone book. And, <laughs> uh, I got to learn why he's got his nickname and, uh, old grumpy pants. <laughs> yep. Yep. So. But no, we've we've had a a, a great friendship over about ten For years, sure. and bringing bringing him into this conversation was was pretty good. So let's get back to the the subject at hand here, and sure. the two twenty four diameter. Um, you know, always been two... controversial. Always has been. Although these days, Craig, I, I think it's less controversial. You know, with with modern bullets. Um, they're heavier for caliber, and like you alluded to before, uh, bonded core bullets, all copper bullets, it's really changed the game. And I mm -hmm. think if you're going to shoot any one of the 22 center fires, uh, you really want to choose the heaviest bullet you can get and the best constructed bullet you can get. Yep. And and they will work um, for, for you know, uh, big game deer, deer hunting. Mm -hmm. um, I would... I would um, you know, some of our northern deer up here, they can get into that 300 pound range. Yeah. I don't know that I'd want to want to take one with that, but um, I know people that have and and talked very highly of it. So what's your favorite one out of that lineup? Well, if we were going to talk about a coyote gun, which is what I use my 22 centerfire for, I'd go with the 22 250 Remington. Yep. You know, with a 55 green bullet, it takes care of all the predator class. But for if I were to go hunt Minnesota with a 22 centerfire, my first choice would probably be a 224 Valkyrie because I can get the heavier bullets. But if that mm -hmm. wasn't the case, I'd go with a good old 223 Remington and, you know, the 60 grain fusion or or the like, you know, yep. something like that. I mean, you can with and, and all, it, the problem with the 22 250 is the twist rate. It won't stabilize bullets heavier than Heavy 55, bullets. maybe 60 grains in a in a shorter confirmation. But, you know, the 223 will with a with a one in 10, um, mm -hmm. the 224 Valkyrie will certainly do so. Yep. Okay, let's jump up to 243 or six millimeter family. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if we put them in numerical order, we got 240 Weathery, 243, 244. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of like some of the gun guys got 
carried away. Well, we're going to make ours one better, so it's you know two forty four. Um, I've owned all three of them. Um, yeah, yeah. I. Uh, what do you think on on that six millimeter? What would you? Uh, I, I mean, if we were going to hunt deer and deer only. I think six millimeter is perfect. You know, very light recoil, minimal meat damage with a proper bullet, but. In Minnesota, y'all got some black bears up in the north that get kind of big. So that's where I've always said, you know, all right, if if it's it's a, a kid's gun for the 243, which I don't think it is, uh, I personally feel it's a little light for black bears. I know it's been used. Uh, I know that people kill elk with it too, but um, per, I would want six five millimeter, even better seven millimeter or 270 for a bear. But, yep. you know, again, if you're just a deer hunter and that's what you really enjoy, and that's probably our most popular game animal across the States, um, yep. a good six millimeter, any one of those with a with a premium bullet, you're, you can't go wrong. And and we use 243s for our introductory learn to hunt program and, and we've had great success with them. And mm -hmm. introducing a new adult to hunting, um, I've actually heard him say, you know, that 30 out six kicks a little bit. But the 243 was was manageable, so sure it's a stepping yeah. stone, and you know yep. you learned how to manage recoil, yep. so that that's a great cartridge to do it. Plus, with the 243, Craig, you got again the 244 Remington lost out because of that twist rate problem again. It couldn't right. use those heaviest bullets. Your 243 is a perfectly viable coyote gun and a deer gun to boot. Yep, you get both coverage, so sure do. Let's jump up to the 257 diameter. So you got 250 Savage, 257 Roberts, 25 odd six, and the the big 257 Weather Me. Mm -hmm. What do you think of the 25s, the quarter bores as they've been uh, termed? Quarter, you know, I've always I got a sweet spot in my heart for the 25s. You know, the 257 Roberts, I just think is uh, <laughs> Todd Geiger better be the 257. The 257 Roberts is my favorite of the lot, and all that is is the seven millimeter Mauser neck down to 257. Yep. Uh, but it offers a really good representative blend of recoil, uh, strain on a bullet, yet killing power. You yep. know, sometimes the 2506 up close can be a bit of a mess. Um, let it slow down a little bit out further. It's a great gun. Mm -hmm. uh, your bullets in the 25 caliber probably going to top off at 120 grains. Right. So you're not not quite as heavy as the six fives, but certainly heavier than the six millimeters. Um, you know, if if you have it and you like it, so be it. Mm -hmm. I, I I think again, this is probably more geared toward a deer cartridge than it is a good you know solid bear choice. But mm -hmm. I know a lot of guys that have taken a bear as a target of opportunity. You know, with a, a 257 Weatherby or 256 mm -hmm. or whatever it may be. And I'm I'm going to throw out the 250 Savage here because mm -hmm. it's it's just kind of a special cartridge. It was the first one to ever go 3,000 feet per second with an mm -hmm. 87 grain bullet. Mm -hmm. um, was the first caliber I bought my wife, and uh, she took a black buck with it, mm -hmm. um, which is a very you know smaller deer sized animal, but um, you know, it worked well for her introductory uh, gun, and uh, she still has that today. Mm -hmm. Somebody's well, asking, where do the 250 and 2506 names come from? Uh, I'll touch on this real quick. 250 3000 Savage was introduced by Savage back in the teens. Uh, you know, it, it's from the Savage Corporation. 250 is the bullet diameter loosely. Uh, the Savage is the corporation that introduced it. 257 Roberts, as we said verbally, was was from Ned in in uh, developed by Ned Roberts by necking down the seven by 57. And anytime you see 06 tacked on the back of a cartridge, it's a cartridge that was developed from the 3006. So to to clarify, the 3006 case was necked down to 25 caliber, and the name is now the 2506. You might see the 33806, mm -hmm. and, and so on and so forth. So I hope that clears things up. It brings us to the, the the new darling of the shooting world, the 6.5 or 264 mm -hmm. diameter cartridges. Um, I have read so many articles on the 6.5 Creedmoor. And, um, you know, I know you're a big fan of a 6.5 284. Mm -hmm. um, isn't Nosler co uh, commercially loading those now? Nosler commercially loads them. Uh, obviously, Norma uh, loads them as well because it's their yep. cartridge. It's the 6.5 284. Norma is the proper name. Um, 6.5 is the question to a, or the answer to a question America forgot to ask. Uh, you know, we had a, a problem with metric designation. Somehow we just couldn't wrap our heads around it. But there's a there's a balance in the 6.5 bore 
uh, with the twist rate they came out with in the late 1800s that mm -hmm. gave us the ability to use those really long, heavy bullets. Uh, going back to one of your favorites, Greg, the 6.5 by 55 Swede. Yep. Uh, yep. Or the 6.5 by 54 Man Licker Schonauer, which is just yep. another company from Europe, uh, which developed that. Uh, and a lot of these cartridges were military cartridges at the time. You know, there was there was uh, that that late 1800s change from the 45s and the 577s, and they went down to these Cupro nickel ca uh, jacketed bullets. So they kept getting smaller and smaller. Uh, the Swedes used the 6.5 millimeter, the Spanish the 7 millimeter, the Germans went to 8 millimeter. We settled on 30, et cetera, et cetera. But mm -hmm. in the hunting world, these 6.5s came on because they're such a good long range cartridge. Their bullets are mm -hmm. very sleek. They have a great ballistic coefficient. And I know in, in Minnesota, I hunted up in Bemidji where you had two scenarios. Either it was like this and you had 30 yards of shooting at best, or you were hunting someone's open field and you might have got two, 250 yards. Mm -hmm. And that's where a Creedmoor would show its 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 advantage, where you could you could you know use the flat trajectory and the wind deflecting abilities. So, I I bit the bullet so to speak, and I've become a <laughs> six five Creedmoor uh, owner and a six five three hundred Weatherby. So we're going to go out and give those a a try. And um, I told my wife, I said, you know, I'm going to let you shoot the six five Creedmoor. That's your gun, and um, it. So far, you know, I, I I like the combination. We'll see how it performs out in the field. It works. It it does. People love to hate it. Um, Merrick is asking a very intelligent question. What is twist rate? And for those that don't understand, the the rifling in a barrel makes a revolution at a certain rate. So what we're measuring is the um, the length and in inches inside the barrel that it takes for the rifling to make one revolution. Mm -hmm. So you it'll be it'll be represented as a ratio one in ten. One in 12, one in six. The slower the revolution or the more distance it takes, the less spin on the bullet and the least stable it is, especially when bullets get long. So mm -hmm. you want a tighter twist rate to put a higher spin on it. So always think of it as a lower twist rate being like one in seven is actually a faster rate of spin and you can use longer bullets. I hope that helped. Sounds good. Um... The next caliber choice, the 277 inch or 6.8, mm -hmm. uh, we're going to try and keep Jack O'Connor <laughs> uh, quiet on this one. But uh, the 270 family, that came out shortly after the, the 30 out 6. 1925. Uh, it was made by necking down the 30 out 6. Actually, by the necking down the 3003. The 270 oh, okay. space is a little bit longer than the 06. Uh, the 270 short mag, that's pretty mm -hmm. new to the market. Uh, I put an asterisk by this one because I know you've had a chance to go out and play with the new 6.8 Westerner and then the 270 Weatherby. So why don't you tell us a little bit about what your favorite is in that lineup and why? That's my 6.8 Western mug right there, buddy. Wow. Uh, again, <laughs> I had to bring it on for you. I, I like, look, there's, there's no denying the 270 is an absolute classic. Um, and that, you know, O'Connor was right, especially in 1925, that this speedy little round was great for Arizona where he was hunting and, you know, the, the mountain sheep and stuff like that. Um, the 270 short mag is just a faster variant of the 270, as is the 270 Weatherby. But again, back to that twist rate idea of the 6.5 Creedmoor, uh, uh, Browning Winchester got together and shortened the case of the 270 short mag a little bit tightened up the twist rate to use longer bullets. And for the first time between the 6.8 Western and the, the 27 Nosler, we can now use 165 grain, 170, 175 grain bullets in the 270 diameter. So for me, that, that 6.8 Western just represents one of the greatest open area cartridges uh, probably ever designed, as well as having the, the sectional density or the bullet length to penetrate on a bear in the, even in the thick woods of Minnesota. You know, and, and that's always been a question, you know, why you couldn't get that heavier bullet? The twist weight is, is the reason. I think I hear Jack starting to stir a little bit, so we're going to jump on to the next one. <laughs> with, with all and, apologies to Mr. Connor, I'm sure he would see the benefits of it as well. So now uh, the, the, the seven millimeter uh, 284 family, um, seven by 57, 280, 280 actually improved. The seven Remington mag, uh, Jim McCarmichael's, one of his favorites, I think. And of course, the seven Weatherby. Uh, what do you think about that lineup? You know, when it comes down to brass tacks, most Americans settle on either a seven millimeter or a 30 uh, for their big game all around cartridge. And look, 
with either bore diameter and a suitable cartridge, there isn't anything in Minnesota that you can't take. Right. Uh, it's it's a you, you got a wide range of bullets and and Tony's getting on a point over here in our question that, that we probably should answer in this range about the copper bullets that you mentioned, Craig. Mm -hmm. um, you with it with a seven millimeter, you can go from you can go from uh, you know a hundred grains all the way up to one hundred seventy five. So there's a a wide range of bullets going on in there. Uh, although to Tony's point, sometimes the top of the scale because copper is lighter than lead. The bullets are so long you can't use the heaviest bullet weights. So you might have to drip, you know, bring it back to 160. But a copper 160 grain bullet in seven millimeter in any one of those cartridges is wonderful. Even for you know, the the moose, if if you know, God willing, we can ever hunt them again up in your boundary water area. The um, the nice thing about the copper is it doesn't shed bullet weight like some of the leads can. Nope, it's so certainly that, not frangible. No. That, so let uh, me ask you this, Craig. In the in the seven millimeter diameter, if you had to choose just one, where would you go? What am I going to hunt? Minnesota. So, you know, my seven by 57 would be a, a great choice uh, for, for 99% of Minnesota hunting. If I was going to hunt elk, I would probably go up to the seven Remington mag or the Weatherby mag. Um, I had an old Parker hail at one time in seven rem. And uh, that was just such a fun gun to go out and shoot. Mm -hmm. So, so I would say either, either those two, I've had a 280. Um, I did shoot an elk with a 280 rim and, mm -hmm. uh, it worked just fine. One shot behind the shoulder. It took about three steps and piled up. Uh, I never have played with the 280 actually improved, but I've talked <laughs> to a lot of guys that have, it's and wonderful. They are just sold it, on it, it. It really is a fantastic cartridge. You, I, you get the performance all, knocking on the door of the seven rem mag, which is a, mm -hmm. a fan favorite, but at the same time, you're burning less powder, uh, less recoil. And you fit another cartridge in the magazine. So there's the advantage right. of that. Yep. Oh, the darling of uh, good old USA, the 30 caliber 308 diameter, 7.62 millimeter. And guys, this goes back to almost the dawn of time. I mean, the, the 30 30 lever guns of uh, the, uh, the, the Western or uh, Eastern hunters. Uh, the 308, the 3006, the 300 H and H, the 300 Wind Mag, the 300 Weatherby. Uh, everybody found a way to try and pack a little bit more powder behind that bullet. <laughs> um, you know, and there was long range thousand yard competition set by the H and H back when the day when it came out. Um, sure. I I can think of not very many households, uh, hunting households that I'm familiar with that don't have a 30 caliber of some kind in there. Yeah, I don't I don't really know any. Um yeah. I mean I I used a 3030 to kill my first deer in a, in a you know, yep. nice little carbine Winchester. My dad has shot 308 Winchester since 1969 and still swears by it, but you know, you, you get a look, the 306 Springfield is the benchmark by which all other calibers are measured. And I, I don't think that's going to change anytime soon. It, it it when in doubt, grab a 3006 and go hunting. I mean, I've I've used it for red deer in Scotland. I've taken uh, axis deer in Texas with it and, and deer here in, in New York where I live, which is very similar to Minnesota's hunting style. Yep. Uh, it just plain works. You can take it just about anywhere in the world without some, you know, ridiculously large beast that requires a much bigger bore. And the 3006, is, your, your guide's never going to frown on you for bringing a 3006. No. And and the nice thing about it is you can find ammo just about anywhere. R pretty much. Pretty much. You, you show up with, with a... A hard to find uh, caliber, and and you might be be stuck, you know. Uh, this is kind of an old timer, but the the 32 caliber, uh, eight millimeter family. Uh, I shot my first deer with a 32 Winchester Special, and um, you know it was a, a gun that I'd gotten borrowed from an uncle, and uh, found ammunition for it, and you know that was it'll always have a special spot for me. Uh, you know, shooting my first deer with it. Um, my dad gave me an eight by fifty-seven Mauser. Uh, Hard to argue with landed, that. I mean, it's you know, when he landed, Germany used it with good effect in the Second World War. Uh, he drove his jeep to the top of uh, the the hill, and the first thing he did was acquire an eight millimeter, and he threw it in his jeep. And I said, "You carried that rifle through the whole war?" Yep. I said, well, "Where'd you find ammo?" He said, "It was laying all over the field. We just..." picked up a bag and <laughs> that's what I carried. Um, the 325 Winchester short mag, that yeah. was always an interesting one when it came out. 
And I, I think a lot of guys didn't associate it with eight millimeter, but it's, it's not hugely popular today. Uh, well, and then, know, Greg, here, here's the problem with, with eight millimeter, which there's nothing wrong with, you really don't get that much of an advantage over the 30. Right. A little bit more frontal diameter. The bullets are a little bit bigger, but the bullet weight doesn't increase drastically. It's not, you know, like you're, you're jumping up to the, the 275s of the 338. So right. with the availability and wide selection of 30 caliber bullets, it always had a small advantage over the eight millimeter here in the U S. Mm -hmm. And then our, our mutual friend, Craig Boddington, uh, he's a huge fan of the eight millimeter Remington mag. Sure. That, and again, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it, with, especially with 220 grain spitzers. It's a flat shooting, hard hitting, you know, combination, but, but ammunition is extremely difficult to procure anymore unless you right. hand load. And I don't know of too many situations where an eight millimeter rem mag is going to get the job done, but my 300 Holland or 300 Winchester isn't. Right. And uh, so it's just personal choice. Personal preference. That's where you decide to go. It's good. Um, so we're kind of closing in here. We got a couple more slides, but the 338 family. And uh, I used to have an old 33 Winchester lever gun. Um, then the 338 Federal, which is a necked up 308 case. Mm -hmm. The 338 six, which is a necked up 30 odd six. Uh, then you get to the 338 Win Mag and the 340 Weatherby on the high end. When I had my 338, I hunted everything from antelope to, to moose with it. And it didn't disappoint on anything. Um, got a lot of ribbing from some of my hunting friends. Why are you carrying that cannon? Because if I see it, I can shoot at it. And, there you go. Um, you know, it was it was just a fun cartridge to have. Do you have any 338 favorites? I, if I had to pick one, I'd probably go with the 33806. Uh, mm -hmm. You're only giving up a couple hundred feet per second compared to the 338 Win Mag, but the recoil really drops off. Um, I like the 338 for the hunter who says, "Look, I might end up." in Alaska or in Africa someday. Now, is a 338 needed for Minnesota? Uh, probably not. Um, but yeah. again, how dead is too dead? What our goal as a hunter is, is to commit a, a, a kill that is quick and humane. Mm -hmm. So if you shoot it well and you don't mind that level of recoil, I see nothing wrong with it. Uh, you know, I've, I've killed animals much smaller than deer with guns much bigger than a 338 because that's what I was carrying at that particular opportunity. Um, right. But that said, the 338 Federal would probably be my choice for Minnesota if I were going. It's got a little bit more, again, more bullet uh, uh, diameter for a bigger hole compared to a 30. Still easy on the shoulder, uh, but has the bullet weight for those those larger 300 pound deer and those black bears that you know you look at it once it's down and you go, how am I going to get this thing out the woods? Right, right. You start calling friends. <laughs> right. <So. laughs> I hope they answer. <laughs> yeah, the uh, the 35 family. And mm -hmm. I have always been as much of a fan of a 35 caliber gun as the 25s, um, the 35 Rem, the 358 Winchester, the 35 Whalen, the 350 mm -hmm. Meg. I've I've had all of them except a 35 Rem. Mm -hmm. uh, their 200 grain bullet does a really nice job on our thick uh, brush country that we have up here. Uh, that 350 Meg, I I tell people all the time. That was our original short mag. The 6.5 yeah. and the, the 300 win, Remington mag were, were our original short mags. They just didn't catch on. The, the 660 and 600 Remington rifles didn't um, catch on with the public as much. And for they whatever reason, <laughs> yeah, we, we just have- I got a buddy that loves them. <laughs> yeah. That dog leg. So here's, here's my thoughts on this, and you tell me what you think, Greg. The 338 and 358 both kind of, generally speaking, top off at 250, and both can with, with hand loading go to 275 grain bullets. Yep. I think the choice comes down to: Do you want the better sectional density, which is the length of bullet in the 338s, or do you want the bigger frontal diameter of the 35s? And it, it's it's such a small difference. Um, and I think for nostalgia's sake, I would go with the 35. Uh -huh. And that would be the only reason. I'm not going to gain really anything different. Uh, the 35 Whalen I had, that was just a beautiful gun built out of Myrtlewood. 
and um, it was it was a great gun. Uh, the 350 I have now is a custom Mauser. I think you got to hold that one when you were at the mm -hmm. house. Um, and the 358, it it still holds a special spot. I buy every box I can find when I'm out there, um, <laughs> just just to have them around. So I know this caliber is one of your favorites and your wife's favorites, the mm -hmm. 375 family. Um, I had a 375 Winchester Big Bore when they came out. It was yeah, like, they were cool. God, look, at, look at this thing, you know. Um, <laughs> and for Minnesota hunting, it, it did everything that I'd want it to do. It would take deer, it would take bear. Um, oh, God, I mean, it's a great gun in the woods, you know. And, and I, I don't subscribe to the, the brush-busting bullet because I've seen all bullets. Even my 470 is deflected. But that's another yep. sad saga for another day. Um, so what you're getting is you just, you're getting a, a huge hole. And the ability mm -hmm. to anchor an animal where it needs to be. Yep. I uh, I don't like tracking bears into the thick stuff, especially once you poke a hole in them. Yep. yep. And and with I've a three seven five Winchester, you know, it, it's it's a, uh, I mean, it, it works. It, it's hard to find ammo for, but you mm -hmm. know, better yet, and probably even more flexible is the three seven five H and H or the three seven five Ruger. Now people are like, oh no, it's it's just an African gun. It really isn't. Um, it's a flat shooting gun when you want it to be. Uh, mm -hmm. My wife hunts deer with it with 235 grain bullets. Uh, she loves the gun that it comes in. And people are like, your wife hunts it? Well, yeah. Meat damage is minimal. It's, I mean, I've, I've done I've done more damage with a 7 millimeter than she does with a 375. Yep. And she shoots it well. So so there's really, there's no arguing. Um, if I wanted a dedicated bear gun, if I want to say, look, I'm just a bear hunter and I want to lay them where they are, it'd be hard to argue with a 375 Holland. We, uh, I, I picked up a 375 H and H and a Weatherby Mark V mm -hmm. and, uh, put a, uh, Zeiss Conquest one to five on it. And I thought, oh my God, I'm, I'm set. Yeah. And, uh, I set it down on the table at the range. I turned around to set up some stuff and I turned back and my rifle was gone. What? I looked over at my wife and she's holding this rifle and she said, <laughs> I want to shoot it. I said, okay. And, um. She touched off the first round and her hat went one way and her glasses kind of went the other. And she looked at me with a grin and she said, I like it. <laughs> so that's how I lost my 375. That's the same and, thing that happened. Uh, I had the same story. And it's like. I, I had had two guns for a hunt we were going on and my wife was coming with me. I said, I got you a 300. She's like, no, no, no. I want I'm like, no, I'll, I'll use the No, no, nope, I'll take this 375. And off sticks, Craig, you know, two inch groups at 100 yards. Yeah. Off shooting sticks. And I'm like. I, I can't argue with you, honey. It's yours. Yep, yep. So she, she has that in her uh, battery now. So the nice um, thing about that 375, just a touch, um, you can load it down to mimic a 338, where you're yeah. going to use 250 to 270 grain bullets that are very flat shooting. It'll give you the same mm -hmm. trajectory as a 3006. Um, and then, you know, when you when you look at the heavyweight end of things, you can go up to you can go up to 350 grains uh, in in the normal line. It, like yep. if you were serious about you know taking that same gun to to Alaska for a grizzly bear, it's no problem to handle that big animal. Right. And how big is a diker? 25 pounds tops. So I mean, you go from a 25 pound animal to a thousand, twelve hundred, fifteen hundred pound yeah. animal. It, it's one gun that just works on a lot Doesn't of different all. That's right. So here in Minnesota, the 44 Remington mag, uh, a lot of people cut their teeth on a Ruger uh, semi-automatic deer slayer was yep. one of their, their models. And um, new Henry lever you know, guns. The, the, yep. The lever guns, you know, it, it's just a, a nice heavy 240 grain bullet. It's not hard on the shoulder right. and it works really good for deer and, maybe up to bear class animals. I would take a bear um, with it. Sure. Yeah. Especially with a, a good hard cast bullet or, uh, you know, one, one of the, the, the monumental choices for sure. Yeah. Um, and then I was introduced to the 444 Marlin. <laughs> oh my goodness. Somebody took a shell stretcher and took that 44 case and stretched it out to what, about two and a half inches. Yes, sir. And, uh, put the same bullet back in it. Well, now you got a whole stack of powder behind it. And, um, uh, I know a few guys that have used them up here and use them for deer bear hunting. It would be a gun that would cross over for uh, elk and timber or, you know, moose. 
Yep. Um, it, it's just a really unique cartridge, but sadly, you know, it, it's it's probably waning a little bit um, and harder to find uh, components for it, you know, but. Um, Federal just came out with uh, with 444 Marlin ammo in their hammer down line. Really? Wonderful. Yeah, so that, that's pretty cool. It's a bonded yep. core hollow point, which which uh, I used it in 4570 a couple of years ago for deer in the Catskills, and it worked just fine. So that that's that's available again. That's that's a great segue because we're going up to forty five caliber bullets right now. <laughs> um, you know the the forty five seventy. How many years old is it now? Eighteen seventy three. It came out. So next year it'll be one hundred and fifty. Um, it, it made the charge up San Juan Hill with uh, Teddy, and it's still going strong today. Uh, I've got a Marlin guide gun mm -hmm. in that caliber. Um. I've carried it a lot, you know, it, it's shot a couple deer with it. Um, yep. It's just a really great, great old cartridge. Great um, Marlin came out with their 450 and uh, it was a way to upstage the 4570 with a little bit more speed, a little bit more power. Mm -hmm. And um, I know a few guys that have, have tried them. Um, it, it really wasn't, it didn't catch on as as much as the old 4570 if anything the 4570 came back a little bit stronger it's like no nah, we'll go with the original we don't need the well i think the problem was that in in some of the newer guns like uh the ruger number one and the ruger number three uh dad's got a browning 1886 and 4570 there mm -hmm. are there are factory loads that are much hotter than anything you could shoot out of a vintage trap door because right. the metallurgy just wasn't there so the 450 marlin was kind of trying to replicate that idea in a cartridge that wouldn't run the risk of being chambered in the wrong rifle. Right. Cause we still got some of that old technology floating around sure. out there and, sure. and, and they're great. I mean, for the guys that have uh -huh. a, a period trap door and, and you like shooting it, I, I think you should just keep the right ammunition and keep banging away with them because they're, they're pretty cool old guns. And if you like the old cartridge with modern stuff, uh, Hornady's Lever Revolution uses that FTX bullet, which is a yep. a rubber tip Spitzer bullet. Um, yep. When I used that 4570 a couple seasons ago, I had it in a in a Heim double rifle. Heim makes this really neat over under model 26. I mean, the the gun yep. was just a tiny little thing, but at, at 100 yards, you could you could put two bullets up and down like that. And I mean, I hit that deer, and he never knew what happened. He just dead right there. So it was a, I was yep. happy with the way it shot and the way it killed, and you know, great handy little rifle. The uh, the other end of that 45 family, the 458 Win Mag, the 460 Weatherby. Um, if you got one and you love shooting it, God bless you. Mm. Go out and, and have fun with it. Um, I had to have a 460 just because it was the biggest commercial cartridge ever made. <laughs> and um, then I shot it. And uh, I think the recoil could be described as hellacious. <laughs> yes, yes, it's it's fairly stout, uh, but it's it's fun just to have one and. So that's our, our little program here. We finished up with uh, 43 minutes of conversation between you and I. And folks, if you take a chance or just a second and jot down ballistic, uh, Masaro Ballistics at yahoo.com, you know, Phil's a, a fun guy to, to correspond with. And, there's and a, before might... we leave, Craig, there's a couple of good questions here, um, you know, yep, specific 40... to Minnesota that I think we should probably touch on. Uh, Bill's asking, what is the preferred weight in a 3006 for Minnesota deer, 150s or 180s? Um, I would probably say stick to the 180s because even your longest shots are probably 250 yards. Uh, so you're not going to you're not going to lose any of the trajectory problems. You know, you're not going to have a, a too flat of a trajectory, but you will you will penetrate better. Uh, you know what I mean? If 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 you need to on a really big deer. See, I, I would take that hair and split it one more, and I would go with a 165. But that's can't just, go wrong with that either. You know, and and, and somebody else uh, had asked about the 3030, and can we comment on its accuracy? Um, I think that the 3030 inside of of 200 yards, even ballistically, is perfect. Mm -hmm. You know, you you've got more than enough energy to take a deer, you know, ethically and and cleanly and quickly. The problem usually lies in the aiming system. Uh, a carbine length barrel with iron sights is not a 200 yard choice in my opinion. Right. If you have a scope on your 3030 and you know, you want that new, that new Hornady ammo. Well, now you've got a game changer. So the cartridge is capable, you know, would you lock the gun in a vice and just mechanically test the gun? 
the accuracy is certainly there. You know, yep. what you need out to 200 yards is two and a half MOA. So if you have a five inch group at 200 yards, it's perfectly capable of killing a deer. We, um, up here in the land of Jack Pine Savages, the Savage Bolt Action 3030 is still a very popular gun. And what an by... accurate gun that was. Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm so... in little bug hole groups. I'm going, why, why doesn't my 3030 do that? It never did and it never will. So we did get quite a few questions here. We got, mm -hmm. uh, oh, 15 minutes or so. Uh, Amber, do you want to ask some questions or Benji? Sure. Uh, sure, I can jump on in here. I saw one coming from Mary. Mary's wondering about what your choice would be for a first gun and caliber that will grow with experience, perhaps enough as not only the first, but the last gun. Ooh, good choice. Heavy question. So we're going to do this toward all of Minnesota? Yeah. I would, well, I would probably say either the 7 millimeter 08 or the 7x57 Mauser. Because I, there are I think that's an awesome choice. Loads. That can, yep. that can work perfect. And yet, if you want to, you can bump up to 160 grain bullets at full house velocities and take anything up to and including moose. I, I agree with that 100%. Uh, the 708 family is very usable in Minnesota. So let's see, next question, Amber. Uh, so, let me just see here. They jumped around a little bit on me. Uh, Todd asked early on, uh, back kind of in the middle of the presentation, about any experience with the seven by sixty-one Sharp and Hart, and just made a comment that that uh, Todd loves his in a Larson. Yeah, seven by sixty-one Sharp and Hart is uh, probably the predecessor to the seven mag. Um, I agree. I don't even know if any game animal could ever tell the difference between the two. And, you know, Todd, I, I know we've talked about yours in the past. Uh, it's an accurate gun. You can hand load for it. So that, that's been solved. So I say, you know, Dominus Hominus Cubiscimus and, and more power to you. The Latin is strong today. The Latin is strong today. That, that's, yeah. that's Latin for shoot straight. Oh. <laughs> okay. So we had a question come in from Ryan as well. Ryan was wondering, what opinions do you have about uh, the 350 Legion um, and 450 Bushmaster? Ah, so the 450 Bushmaster is designed for the AR platform. Um, it's a thumper. I mean, it's got a rebated rim, uh, which can be a problem in bolt guns, but really shouldn't be in the AR. And, you know, if you want, if you can shoot it well and you enjoy its performance, that'll certainly take anything Minnesota's got to offer, including a Bigfoot. Uh, you know, it's just one of those guns. Um, the 350 Legend was designed for those states that require straight walled cartridges. So what they did is they developed a, a lighter straight walled cartridge based on the idea of the 444 Marlin or the 4570, which will give a little bit less recoil and a little bit flatter trajectory for the deer hunter. And I, you know, it, it's a it's a, a niche weapon, if you will, cartridge. Um, it, it's designed for those situations. I would probably not reach for one here in the Catskills or, you know, if I were heading out west, but if I didn't have anything else, I certainly wouldn't stay home. It, it'll mm -hmm. work. All right. Did you see, uh, did you oh. see the question from my uh, my long lost brother Todd? Which one? He says uh, would like to hear both of your opinions on one single caliber for North America. Ooh. Is that and, include and, Alaska? Are we going to include Alaska or no? Well, that's yeah. Um, I, I'm going to go back to the thirty out six. If you got a thirty out six, you can hunt anywhere in North America. Mm -hmm. um, you know, things can change a little bit, but um, you uh, you got a gun that should take you anywhere. So what do you think, Bill? I mean, J.Y. Jones, you know, Dr. Jones hunted, was it all 29 species in North America with a 3006. Yep. If you were to be concerned about bison and the really big bears, maybe you want to switch that to a 338 Win Mag and, and suffer the recoil for the, the little tiny deer and all of that kind of thing. But I really think it's hard to beat a 308 or a 3006 as a universal application. I mean, you know, I'd even go so far as to say a 300 Winchester will do the same job and not many game animals at same distances would be able to tell the difference. So yeah, uh, good old American 30 caliber. And, and like I said, the, it, God smiled on the 3006. I, I agree. And uh, 
we're getting down towards the bottom of the list there, Amber. I see one from Corey. Yep. Um, any comments referred uh, related to using a pistol for hunting in deer in Minnesota? Uh, I want to be a handgun hunter. I have went out a few times and carried my handgun and my rifle. Deer stepped out. I shot deer with rifle and went, oh, I should have used my handgun. Um, it's legal across the state. A handgun is legal to hunt in the uh, southern part of the state where it's shotgun or handgun. And uh, I'm going to get there. I'm going to I'm going to take a deer with a handgun someday. My buddy told me just leave your rifle home, and he said that way you'll you'll have to use your handgun. So I took his advice, and the deer stepped out at 200 yards and went ha ha <laughs> and walked away. Um, so yeah, there's. I, I would like to do it. Have you taken a deer with a handgun yet? I, I've taken a handful, uh, three maybe. Yeah. Uh, I'm not a big handgun hunter. I've got a, a, a Ruger Blackhawk and 45 Colt that mm -hmm. I really enjoy, but I always, you know, what if that big, but like you say, 200 yards or 150 yards, what happens? I, I think much like bow hunting, the, the honest is on the hunter when you say, I need to admit my limitations. Mm -hmm. I'm good with this handgun to X amount of yardage. And had that deer stepped out 10 yards further, I have to pass on the shot. Mm -hmm. And I think the same has to be said for bow hunting. Yep. Um, you do give up some shots. Yep. You do. Uh, but and, if you, you really enjoy your hunting with a handgun and that challenge, so be it. Yeah. You got to know your limitations. Um, sure. You know, and I the same can be said for a rifle. I know a lot of guys that can't make a 200-yard shot consistently. So back off to 150 where you can. That's right. Or, or 100. And uh, just know your limitations when you're out there and, and that'll go good. Uh, the last question I'm seeing is uh, old lead shotgun shells. Are there any places that accept these for recycling or how would you get rid of these? Um, how would you dispose of uh, old lead shotgun shells that you didn't want to shoot anymore? Hmm. Uh, you, can, you can pry the end open and pour the shot into a container and recycle that. Mm -hmm. Dry fire the rest and, you know, to dispose of the powder and then toss them. Yep. That'd be um, safe. Yep. You can get rid of them that way. Um, depending if you're talking like, uh, you know, old duck loads, that might be, you know, too much uh, for for clay target shooting. But if you had a bunch of old um, dove and quail or, you know, eight and a half or eight, seven and a half shot. Um, yeah, rabbit loads, right. There, there's a lot of um, uh, scholastic uh, target teams, uh, Minnesota State High School Clay Target League programs out there that if, if you had, um, you know, some small size lead shot that maybe you could make a donation to one of those trap teams and, you know, shooting lead at a, at a trap club, that's what's there. That's what they go out and recycle. Um, it's the craziest machine I've ever seen run, but they go through and take about the top four to six inches of soil run it through the machine, the the dirt comes out the back and the, the lead stays in the machine. And uh, and they can recycle that and, uh, and 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 use it for a different purpose or or whatever. But uh, a lot of a lot of clay target ranges around have uh, junior, you know, uh, high school clay target programs going on. And and that might be a way to to you know reuse those. Let's see, I can check. He's asking line. about a 3006 yeah. for Owdad. Uh, I'll just touch on that real quick. Owdad are tough. Um, it's it's a, a, a vastly underrated hunt in Texas, poor man's sheep hunt. But your 3006, pick a good premium 180 grain bullet, learn your trajectory, and at 150 yards, it's a dead hold. Send it. You got no problem. No problem at all. Tony said that that... where it needs to be. That's the yep. key. I, I agree. Uh, Tony said that a friend of his said a local police department was actually willing to take old ammunition. Um, so that might be an option for for you to, to drop yours off there too. Mm -hmm. So let's see, our time is uh, about six minutes to the hour. If there's any last questions, uh, get them put into the Q&A. If not, thank you. I saw you. one. Oh, oh yeah. I, I think I saw one that we might've missed from Jason about the max range for a 44 deer slayer. Um, oh my God! Um, <laughs> you, you I want know, to keep that inside of a hundred yards. Yeah, I, I would say hundred yard gun. Um, 
it, it's just such a big, heavy bullet that you're going to lose so much velocity uh, in a short distance that, you know, hundred again, unless you go to that FTX bullet from, from Hornady. Yep. Yep. You can get a little, and the bit. old rule of thumb was, Oh, you know, the, the, the gun writers trick was, you know, you need a thousand pounds, a thousand foot pounds of energy to kill a deer. And I don't know who came up with that number, but I don't necessarily subscribe to it. Uh, what I would recommend is, is check the energy figures. And if it really drops off to, you know, 500 or something, be concerned. But other than that, it's going to be about bullet placement more than that. So if you want to try 150 yards with that Hornady stuff, just make sure that the bullet can be put where it needs to be. Right. Uh, Mary squeaked in with our last question here. Benji, are you available? The uh, question is um, about air rifles and ammo for air gun hunting. And Benji actually did a, a story on that uh, a while back. And for small game, uh, you know, squirrels and rabbits, and uh, it it was working fine. And you know, you got uh, some alternative ammo choices. I guess is the best way to put it. Uh, you can get lead pellets, or you can get tin pellets. Um, I can't remember. It was a Gamo that was making the the gold plated mm. um, pellets. So. So that's it. some of the 40 caliber air rifles. I know guys that have taken bears with them. You know, the, 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 some of the stuff I've seen through Safari Club, I mean, they've got some, some cannons made out of air rifles and uh, talking about. I, mean, I don't know stuff. about the legality. I don't know your Minnesota laws very well. Yeah. So I apologize for that. But Angie, do you remember the, the story on air rifles? They're perfectly fine for small game hunting in Minnesota. You're muted, bud. Is this thing on? <laughs> oh, he's he's Not having here. some technical difficulties. So I think we'll we'll close up shop here. We got about a minute or two before. Um, Phil, thank you so much for agreeing oh, to Craig, come buddy, on. Craig, buddy, listen, it's, it's been great to talk with you again. Please tell the missus I said hello, and it was I fantastic will. to be here. Maybe we can do another one in the future. A lot of fun. Take care. Appreciate you, buddy. So, Amber, if you can take us back to the, the green room, folks, have a great day and tune in next week.